So we're watching these North American markets. They have definitely changed their course today. They're now showing signs of uh, a real move higher. That's after the Dow saw its biggest single day jump. Uh, it will drop on Friday, and then we are seeing a, a move higher today. There's the TSX quickly. Uh, quick look there. But the Dow um, really is much stronger on the day. All of this because we are hearing more Fed speak today that is on the dovish side. Let me bring in Dan Avgdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital Management. Dana, great to be with you today. Thanks. Thanks, thanks. thanks for joining us. And Pleasure. My goodness. You, you look at Friday. It seemed as though the world was falling because nobody expected a potential rate hike in September. Uh, S&P down 2.5%. Today we hear from Brainerd, one of the Fed presidents, and urging caution with removing accommodative policies. And we're off to the races again. It must be at some point so frustrating to be head of trading, portfolio manager in a central bank driven market. This is a really different uh, world uh, these days where you're hanging by the, by the, by the words of, of, of so many Fed speakers. I actually don't remember so many Fed speakers speaking all together all at the same time so often in my career. Um, but on the dispersion between the sectors of what works and what doesn't, and then it switches around, is so fast and so, uh, so volatile and so quickly. Um, you know, Friday, um, there were a lot of things that exacerbated the situation. Did we really think that they're going to raise rates on, Sept on September 2021? Is that what really took the market down? No, what, um, undoubtedly the bond market did something. Um, but we've started seeing uh, the deterioration in the bond market maybe a day or two before Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what happened on Friday it was a confluence of events, a perfect storm. You had Draghi the day before. You had Bank of Japan talking about um, um, lifting uh, the, the, the curve, um, just almost as if they all decided together that negative rates is not working. But there wasn't really um, any, um, you know, before that the bond market was deteriorating quite substantially. And interestingly, you know, low vol strategies um, underperformed the market on Friday. So my point that I want to deliver is that in today's market there is a lot of strategies as money has been moving into passive investing. Uh, and I'm not talking about index. Uh, that has been around for a long time. I'm talking about um, quantitative black box strategies that when something triggers um, there is a lot of insensitive sellers. And I've spoken about this before about the um, factor slippage or a factor drift where a low vol strategy is really the crowded trade and that's what you saw on Friday. So these are sellers that are not um, they're not sensitive to the price. It's program trading and it's automatic and it's algorithmic and so hmm. forth. Um, Diana, I think that uh, a lot of people would find it hard to believe that this type of strategy, uh, this kind of quant strategy uh, going off of algorithms or what have you wouldn't be price sensitive. It is actually not in terms of the um, program and they put in see it's there's all kinds of mathematical formulas that trigger the sale or the buy or the asset allocation. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, programs and you see the market um, hit uh, in, to the tune of say a thousand names a thousand down ticks all in the same split second. No human can actually downtick uh, a thousand names all at the same time. Um, I think that from a portfolio perspective, um, as long as the metrics from a trading, this is very, very granular that I'm talking about, from a metrics perspective, as long as the portfolio metrics correlations, volatilities are in line, um, you have the outlier single names, not all, but single names that you would cross the spread a little more often than say you would if you were just a single name training that particular name. And I think that, that what happens is with all the uh, footprint reading strategies, I think you get volatility, I'm not saying that the market wouldn't have been down, mm -hmm. but perhaps it wouldn't have been down 2.4% to rebound as much as it has today. Right. And now we, for, yeah, right? Go ahead. Well, yeah, we, I mean, we really saw it, di it dip a little bit further and faster, heading right into the close. Uh, because, I think yeah, yeah, you have all these double, triple ETFs, which we know how they're trading. They need to, it's just like portfolio insurance or all other kind of derivative strategies. The lower it went, the more exposure to certain instruments, certain 
it, trackers had to have. So it increases the direction. It exacerbates the direction. It does not create the direction. So, Diana, that can be confusing sometimes because I think a lot of the time, well, it's definitely confusing, but I think a lot of the time, too, even for very, very seasoned money managers, which has been hard uh, over the past year, certainly, and that's why you've seen a lot of hedge funds underperform, particularly in the United States I'm talking about. But, um, you know, you, you want to make sure you're not the last person to try to exit the room. And so as, as much as we might sit here and say, you know, the market, just the composition of the market will cause moves to be exacerbated because of the trading, because of what we're talking about in terms of who's in the market, the quants and the algos, uh, at what point do you say, you know what, this move, I believe? Right. Uh, it, and it remains to be seen. It's, uh, for the work that we do, and we do a lot of um, breadth work and uh, price momentum, just uh, the internal temperature of the market uh, from a top-down perspective globally. Uh, over the weekend, we ran a lot of uh, different models. Our models are not broken. Everything has pretty much come into uh, its pattern, I its range. And so if the market wasn't up today, I would have still said, um, I think you buy the dips. Mm -hmm. Two and a half percent is not that much, actually. Um, so say we were flat today, you, uh, we would still want to buy the dips. That's not to say that the market cannot break at some point. I think we have more volatility coming up. Um, we have a lot of catalysts, September, um, so forth. Um, but for now, um, we would recommend that you buy the dips and uh, you stay put in your strategy. There are different narratives. Uh, we don't, we're not big believers in the bond market. And this is not a unique view. But where asset managers differ here is that there are asset managers that think that maybe the bond market is not where you want to be right now, but that it will impact the equity markets negatively. Whereas we feel that despite the fact that the bond market is acting the way it is, it will eventually benefit the equity markets through the asset flows. We feel investors are still underinvested. Mm -hmm. And so that is where we differ. The question is how long might one take versus the other? We still at this point recommend buy the dips. Okay, and uh, Diana, with respect to buying the dips, I'm actually hearing that from uh, some big funds in the United States. That they are, they're looking to buy the dips, which is quite interesting. And you can see it, right? You can see that the market will open down and, and start to kind of move higher throughout the day. Even if it closes in negative territory, it's still kind of moved off the bottoms, and that's a lot of the big guys coming in and buying. Right. But with respect to buying, where are you buying? What sectors? We have not changed our, um, our weights in terms of sector exposure, so I'll just say that we're over-invested and we like still information technology, um, you know, things like Microsoft, Facebook, um, Texas Instruments. Uh, we have uh, added to financials over the past month, month and a half. I think we continue to do that um, to a certain extent. Energy. Mm -hmm. um, we are underweight the TSX, but that is no indication of, um, of anything because the TSX is not really that diversified. It's very high in energy. So we have about 10 to 15 percent energy, depending on the uh, client, uh, mainly in infrastructure um, as opposed to pro uh, exploration production companies. There are a couple. So technology, consumer, financials, and some energy. Okay. Diana, we'll leave it there. Great to see you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Catherine.